I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, first item on the agenda is the um, uh, uh, the consent agenda, and that is the approval of the um, minutes for the last three meetings. I have to make a correction on the February sixth minutes, both the study session. And the regular meeting, I am not listed as there, but I was. <laughs> Jenny was here. Okay. I mean, it, it has my votes in there, so that part is there, but not listed in the attendance. Any other corrections, Jenny? <laughs> Did you see anything else? No, you're on. You're you're a, you're an eagle of that kind of stuff. So I appreciate that. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else have a uh, anything to say about the minutes? Any comments from the board? Any comments from the community? If not, I would accept a motion at this time. So moved. Thank you, Casey. I will second. Thank you, Stephen. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries seven to zero. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the Financial report. <coughs> anything you really want to share with us, Shotter? Uh, I don't have anything specific unless the board has any questions. Uh, as you can see, the receipts and expenditures for the month of January have been submitted. Uh, as far as overall, uh, I am making some, some good headway. We've been getting our grants uh, back in line. Megan and I have been working <laughs> on several of them, uh, trying to pick up the key rolling with those and figure out where we're at with our reimbursement so that we can get those submitted. The only item that I that will probably come, I'm going to talk to Jana about this, will be at some point we'll need to do a fund transfer and so we'll be bringing that to the board because we did not do any of those at the end of last year. Okay. So. Okay. Do we, um, have we got caught up with all the, um, you were working on getting everything back in line for 2023? Yes, I am down to the operating fund um, and finalizing that for 2023, and then we should be back on track, and then I will get January completed, and then I'll just be waiting on February statements. At that good, good work. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, does anyone have any questions? As of uh, today's email, uh, we have $1,299,567 in the education fund. We have $1,472,316.37 in the debt service fund and $387,823.15 in the operations fund. Questions? And that's expenditures in the operations fund. The operations fund is technically in the red. Which is the transfer shot of Yes. So were you talking like the interfund transfer between the education fund to the operations fund? Yes. Yes. I think we shot it, correct me if I'm wrong, but wanted to wait until the end of the year so we have real no numbers correct. moving over to January 1st so that we have a good correct. starting point. Yep. So not until 2023 is definitely signed, sealed, and delivered. Correct. Right. Right. Then we will feel comfortable. But Shada has kind of got some. Okay. Um, thank you for all you do, and thank you for that correction, Jenny. I went over this. I mean, I, I, I went over I'm this very, very carefully, and I don't know how I missed it. I'm glad Jenny said because like, I she we were sliding in. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Where did that come from? I did. I was like, wait, I don't remember that. <laughs> My mistake. All right. Uh, any questions or comments from the board? Comments from. Those in the gallery? 
I will accept a motion that we approve the funds reports as read. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Thank you, Casey. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries seven to zero. Next, we have the reading of the policies. This is our second reading, which means at our marketing. Yeah, claims of claims. Is the oh. Claims of payable. You guys just quick correct. <laughs> <laughs> I had so. it all up here a minute ago, but. Okay, claims. We have uh, claims totaling $924,701.04. Any questions or about the claims? Anything from the gallery? If not, I'll entertain. Well, let's go. Yeah, let's go ahead and approve the claims. I'll accept a motion. So moved. Thank you, Mark. Second. Thank you, Ethan. All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. And I guess we should approve the payroll while we're at it. <laughs> Probably. You may hear from the gallery. <laughs> <laughs> Not my bad. All right. Uh, so the payroll in the amount of one million two thousand one million two thousand one hundred. Thirty-one dollars and one penny. Uh, are the total payroll two, two payrolls. So, any questions about that? Should we pay? Right. <laughs> Anything from you guys want us to pay? It never mind. All right. Uh, I'll accept a motion at this time. So moved. Stephen. Second. Ethan, thank you. All those in favor? Motion carries. Seven to nothing. You all get money. All right. And we move on to policies. Um, we would, you know, Casey would be very happy to read these 13 policies for you if you're really excited about hearing them. If not, we can assume that you've all heard them and read them and know what we're talking about. Any questions on policies? Do we have to read through the numbers? No. She told me that once and I didn't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything from anybody else? I think it's okay. We don't even need to vote on that. We're moving on. And we're at E action items approval of the literacy grant funds. So I believe, um, as you'll recall, at the study session, we talked about the literacy <coughs> grant funds that came in. These are the ones that were um, kind of surprising to us. They are only for teachers preschool through third grade, and then any other hourly employees who work directly with literacy and deploying that. The school received in total um, $37,214.80. Uh, I want to thank Jason and Luke and Megan. Um, they walked the building, we sat and talked. They walked the building a second time, we sat again again and talk, we wanted to make sure we didn't overlook anybody. And then I want to thank Hope and RCTA. We took this to discussions and we would like to um, share with the hourly employees, they would each receive $200 of that and that would be after taxes and everything all in, their check would be right at about $200.40. And then looking through the teachers, it's a little bit harder because of different retirement plans and those types of things. But the average for teachers then that qualify or in, in the, are in those grade ranges would be right around $592 would be the average that teachers would receive. Good to know. And so if the board does approve that, we would distribute those at our next payroll, which I believe is March, the March 8th payroll. How many total employees do you have? Oh, you don't have to count them. I used to not count them every year. Right around 60 to 65 employees. 
and it's really nice. Right. I'm sure they'll appreciate that. I know how, I know that can be a challenge. I, I, I appreciate everybody's work on that and our CTA support and honoring those hourly employees that work hard to promote literacy as well. Jenna, could you, I think I'm correct in saying I was looking at that um, flyer from the state. There was like this really complex formula on how they figured it, but one of them was our passing rate. Correct. Which was, I'm just excited for these teachers because the 93% passing rate is the best in the area. It's just like, Amazing. I've never been, I'm more excited about this than I ever have by my own life. They're just, <laughs> elementary teachers don't get recognized like high school teachers do, you know, or middle school. So I just think it's, thank you it's for exciting sharing. for them. Thank you. Thrilled. Did you say 532? 592 is the average for teachers. And then write it two hundred and two hundred dollars and forty cents for the hourly employees to be distributed on the March eighth payroll if the board approves that this, <coughs> this evening, I guess I have the news Okay. <coughs> so uh, any other questions on the literacy grant funds? Sounds like a win all the way around. Is that a separate check or just be part of the payroll? That would be part of their payroll. Anything else? If not, I would accept a motion. So moved. Thank you, Mark. Seven. I will second. You guys sound alike. <laughs> you guys are, I, have to, I always have to look up. Switch, switch sides or something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, all those in favor? <coughs> she carries seven to zero. Next is the approval of Bus surplus. Sale of surplus corporation buses. So Kevin presented at the study session and I appreciate um, both Stephen and Jenny's input into that as we look through government uh, websites and auction sales. I think that Kerlin was being uh, more actually in some cases more than fair in what they're offering us. So um, would make the recommendation that we move forward with Kerlin's uh, proposal to purchase those used buses. Any questions from the board? Any comments from the gallery? If not, I'll accept a motion at this time that we approve the sale of the buses to Kerlin. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Stephen. Second. Stephen, thank you. All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you, Kevin, for your work on that as well. And we have a field trip coming up for the baseball team. As this is, I believe, a new field trip, I asked Kevin to share out. Oh, you just want me to, or were there questions <laughs> first? <laughs> Why don't you give a little bit of background and then if they have questions. Okay, so the beginning, the first competition date for high school baseball is the 23rd of March. And, you know, we're back from spring break. And the area schools around us are not. And Coach Good has been looking to fill this late March slot for since Greg was the athletic director. And they just haven't found a good fit. So at the coaches clinic last month, um, Coach Good and his networking uh, were, was able to come up with a plan to be able to get to Madison on the 30th of March and play a doubleheader. We'll play Madison who's a very strong 3A uh, program, and then Jeffersonville, which was eliminated from the 4A semi-state last year. So we're, we are planning to play two really good schools. So the overnight part of it is they're gonna leave after school on Friday. Uh, they're gonna go to Columbus, and th they'll stay all night. Um, there'll be, uh, there are 14 guys max going and seven coaches. So the, that ratio is, is really nice. And then they'll get up in the morning and they will um, go to Columbus East High School and have like an hour workout and then they'll drive the rest of the way to Madison, play their two games, and then come home. Sounds like a good, up, good opener. It's a, team, it's a team building thing. Uh, also, uh, Coach Good is looking, he's looking for different ways to, to get the guys you know, out of 
their routine and their element and be able to spend some time together and to play some good competition, honestly. So um, he's very excited about having the opportunity to get this to, to fit. Uh, they'll take two minibuses and there will be one minibus available um, for softball on that same Saturday going to LaVille. So it doesn't impact any of the other programs. Um, the parents have, uh, have a plan for food for the guys. They're gonna do pizza for them on Friday night and then Saturday they'll do the hotel hot breakfast and then they'll have things for them when they get to Madison, you know, snacky type stuff and then they'll do probably Subway on the way home. So the parents are, are fired up about it. They're, um, they're excited about the opportunity for their kids to be able to go. It's doing like a little something different and it's, um, you hear about schools in our area doing that you know, with the hope that the weather down there is better than it would be to play here. Um, but it's always a crapshoot no matter where you go. But, but Coach Good is, is very excited, and uh, we, we feel like what he has put into the program from the youth, where they have the clinic, and then the, the middle school age baseball, and then, um, you know, the work that, that, that the club does, the baseball club does, uh, to raise funds to, to, get, to get them what they need to, to put a first, first class um, product on the field and we feel like when coaches do those kinds of things we would look to be able to give them those opportunities. Great. Sounds like a good, a good thing to do this time. This first round, round and hopefully... First time, yeah, this first time and, and you know the excitement was such that he forgot to tell me he went straight to Greg to see if he could, if he could get it scheduled and Greg said what do you think and I said I told him if he could organize it and get it together then we would we would be able to see if we could make it happen. Well, we'd like to hear out, yeah. at, you know, either something written or if he wants to come to the board meeting, which oh. they all just can't wait to do, I'm sure. But. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Corey would come and tell you all about it. That'd be great. He, okay. would, he would want to do that. All right. So, Kevin, uh, there's listed on here um, two parents. Uh, so, and one of them is a staff member. Are they going to go and be chaperones? You mentioned seven coaches. Yeah. So are these parents going and helping chaperone too? Do you know? Yeah, all the all the adults that are going and you know the, the seven coaches, many of them are volunteer. Um, they are paying for their own rooms. The athletic department is only paying for the four rooms that the players will be in. Um, so the, the parents want they want to be there. They want and a lot of these parents are travel ball parents and so they're used to this kind of gig and they're excited about it. Um, I this is not um, any sort of judgment on Coach Good or his program, just because of in the past, and not his program, a different program, we have had issues with um, behavior and, and use of illicit substances while gone. So I guess I would just um, encourage, especially a lay coach, uh, some training before he goes on what to look for, what are best practices when you're uh, watching these students overnight. Again, nothing specific to his program, just to help protect the kids and himself and his, his staff in knowing the way that we would, would want overnight field trips monitored. One of, one of the things that I talked to him about was if we get this approved and if you guys get to go, if something were to happen, we would never be able to go again. And, and, that was, and he understands that Absolutely, 100%. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Good stays up most of the night. <laughs> well, we wouldn't want that. But <laughs> yeah. no, I understand your I understand your concern, and, and it's it's always a concern when we have these overnight trips. Oh sure. Um, yeah. You know, we just we just had three nights in Evansville, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I didn't get back a single negative issue or something that happened. So that's really great. We had a rule in our house when the kids got to be about driving age that said the rule was don't be stupid. That was the only rule. It just applied to everything universally. Don't be stupid. So. It's fun to see them looking at to do some bonding and something outside of the box. I think it's I think it's a strong way to start the season. Okay. Any questions or comments? Anyone else? All right. I would accept a motion that we approve the baseball field trip. So Mark and Stephen. <laughs> I got that they said that. All right. All those in favor? 
Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Well, I'm excited. And next we move on to donations. I put that in there. Casey loves that I use for the Yes. Uh, monthly donations for February 2024. Columbia Elementary, Toys for Daycare, Tracy Leininger. Columbia Elementary, 11 boxes of vinyl gloves for compassionate health care. Columbia Elementary, $100 for the Columbia Library from Sire to Zai. Riddle Elementary, $100 for the Riddle Library from Sire to Zai. RMS, $100 for Stacy's Closet from Rochester Kiwanis Club. RMS, $250 to Stacy's Closet from Martin Smith. RMS, $1,000 to Stacy's Closet from The Optimist Club. RMS, $100 for the RMS Library from Sai Rizai. RHS, $250 for the RHS Cross Country Team from Troy Pryor. RHS, $100 for the RHS Library from Sai Rizai. RHS, $500 for RHS D&D Club from Matt and Julie Sutton. What's the D&D? That's awesome. D&D. Dungeons and Dragons. Got it. Okay. <laughs> have no idea what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, is it role play or is it a video RPG game? RPG or yeah. uh, role play? It's a tabletop game, so oh, okay. they don't necessarily need stuff because it's more imagination and role play but it's if they have physical stuff it's a board game more than it is a video game. Have I seen this like on um what? Yep, uh, probably. <laughs> Sheldon? Big Bang Yeah, Big Bang Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. No, that's all that's my home, only knowledge of that. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> RHS girls basketball, one hundred dollars for the uh, sectional student section from Fraunfelder Dental Clinic. RHS Girls Basketball, $100 for sectional student section, Road Star Driving School. RHS Girls Basketball, $100 for sectional student section from Dick's Drive-In. RHS Girls Basketball, $100 for the sectional student section, Wild, Wild Aesthetics. And RCSC, $4,329 Corporation Backpack Program from Rochester Grace Church. RCSC, $5,000 Corporation Backpack Program, Faith Outreach Church, Rochester, Indiana, and Rochester Four Square Church. That is a phenomenal donations list. And uh, we are very um, grateful that, that people are so willing to come forward and, and take care of things um, so easily. And we, we're, we're very much um, honored by that. So, are there any questions or concerns about the funds report? I mean, the, the donations report. <laughs> if not, I'll accept a motion that we uh, approve the donations as read. So mm -hmm. yep. Jenny, anything? <laughs> All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. Next, we have the um, personnel report. And uh, <coughs> recommendations from Columbia Elementary School, Jordan, newest transfer to first grade instructional assistant, hourly rate 1438. Riddle Elementary, spring intercession, Amy Freeman, teacher for intercession, her hourly rate is 4775. Joanna Johnson, teacher for intercession, hourly rate 5995. Corinne Hines, teacher for intercession, hourly rate 3784. Heather Schaefer, IA for intercession, hourly rate 1668. Don Howard, long-term sub for Mrs. Melton. Is that through February 12th? Is that February? Beginning, beginning, February. beginning February 12th, thank you. Daily rate of $140. Elizabeth Swango Long. Oh, Elizabeth Swango, long-term <laughs> sub. <laughs> hey, you you know what's like the day and I Okay, long-term sub for Mrs. Ross's maternity leave, daily rate of $140. RMS, spring intercession. Nate Basham, teacher for intercession, hourly rate 4302. Emily Brown, IA for intercession, hourly rate 
Alexis McSherry, teacher for intercession, hourly rate 43.02. Rochester athletic recommendations. TJ Smith, RHS varsity baseball coach, stipend $2,100. Brent Easterday, RHS varsity baseball coach, stipend $2,100. Jacob Good, RHS baseball volunteer coach. Todd Beeler, RHS baseball volunteer coach. David Fallio, RHS baseball volunteer coach. David Musselman, RHS softball volunteer coach. And Jason Coleman, RHS softball volunteer coach. FMLA, Jenny Bauman, intermittent for family member beginning January 25th, 2004. Brittany Ross, maternity leave approximately March 8th through May 24th, 2024. And resignations, Mary Amskita, instructional assistant at Columbia Elementary as of February 16th, 2024. Any questions about the personnel report? Um, I have just a brief one and since we're recording and I'm sure people that watch are curious like, when they're looking at the intercession hours and we're paying their hourly rate, could you elaborate on how many quote unquote hours they'll be working for that intercession period? So the principal's probably is it four, it's four hours four a day, day. Four <laughs> hours a day. And then the hourly rate would be based on years of experience and where they fall um, within the teacher contract. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Stephen, for clarifying that. Right. Any other questions? <clears throat> if not, I'll accept a motion that we approve the personnel report as read. Thank you, Jenny. I'll second. And Stephen. All those in favor? The motion carries seven to zero. <clears throat> Moving on to the superintendent's business. We'll go ahead and start with um, principal and director reports. Kevin, do you mind? Kevin Ryan, do you mind leading us off with your report? Thank you. Uh, we had uh, Randy Pike in today for a yearly DOT audit to check all it is for a uh, check to make sure we're in status quo with the drug test and the clearance house, um, physicals, all that. We all checked out good. We had a clean bill of slate, all in good shape. And that's all we have done. It's all been good. No more snow. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Until that one. <laughs> <laughs> no more snow. For Columbia, uh, some of the things over the past month, uh, our daycare took its first field trip to the high school this uh, past week. During the FFA week, they went down so they could see the animals and uh, get to visit those. So it was really nice for um, the little toddler kiddos to get out of the building for a little bit and spend some time over at the high school. So we thank the FFA as well for always uh, hosting our kids whenever we need to get over there. Uh, Mrs. Flynn took a, a group of her students to uh, the public library um, this past week. And um, our star card winners, we took to the art studio. Uh, Brenda McLean, our counselor, took the kids to the art studio up here in town, Elemental Art Studio. It's something we do every year. I've done for about uh, three years so far. And kids absolutely loved it and um, really good uh, opportunity for them. So uh, some upcoming events. We've got um, Zebra Zone next Friday. We've got our uh, book fair going on right now. Uh, this week and it'll culminate uh, Friday evening with it being open uh, to the public. Uh, we've also got um, spring break coming up. After spring break we have a bike safety enrichment taking place. Uh, we're working with our new SRO and uh, he is going to be um, hosting that. We'll be hosting it at Columbia but he'll be putting that on uh, and we're working on putting that together right now. So uh, we're also going to give away free uh, bike helmets to anybody that comes to that. Student <coughs> um, we're not going to give them to the adults, but the students. Uh, we've also got an enrichment for um, the Columbia and Riddle uh, to show or to go see a movie over spring break at the Times Theater. 
and uh, that's a five dollar um, event for them and it gets them into the movie get some um, drink and uh, popcorn and uh, we'll be there to supervise parents can just drop their kids off and it's something they need to sign up for just so we know our numbers but um, <clears throat> that's looking pretty good right now and then we'll have intercession uh, that second week of spring break and that will be at Columbia as well uh, for Riddle um, we, Riddle wants to thank REMC for coming to the fourth grade and making circuit boards with their kids. That was apparently a very good uh, activity. It turned out really well for them. I read is next week. Second and third grade students will be participating. So that'll be a busy week for, uh, for that building uh, taking place next week. And then second grade will have their concert next week on March the 7th. That's all I got. I uh, was wanting to congratulate our boys and girls, seventh and eighth grade basketball teams. They both made it to the semifinals in the RRC tourney. Just came up short of that championship game. So congrats to them on a great season. The boys also won the Culver tourney a couple weeks back. So they both had very nice seasons. I wanted to thank the Kiwanis Club and the Optimist Club for having us present to them um, over the last couple weeks. We had our sweetheart dance last Friday, which is way more of a recess. But <laughs> it was a good time. Uh, lots of kids stayed and ate lots of food. Um, we do have our elective selection sheets out, so parents, um, those should be coming home. The kids can fill them out. Parents have to sign off on that for next year, so looking at scheduling for next year. Take a look at the elective selection sheets and see what we have to offer. Those are due back on March 6th. Want to thank the high school for FF Week yes. Celebration. FF, is yes. that four, just six and seven, or is that four? So fifth grade has them for next year. So it would be fifth grade and sixth grade students okay. currently. Yes. Want to thank the high school for the FFA Week celebrations. We kind of piggybacked onto a lot of the things that they did, and we all came outside and watched the tractor parade, which was exciting for lots of students. So thank you to them. Thanks to Megan McLaughlin working with several um, Teachers over the last couple weeks meeting with departments, working on curriculum maps, helping them immensely. She's doing a great job and making our teachers feel comfortable and um, very supportive in the endeavors of curriculum mapping and um, new textbooks coming. Coming up, we have a wrestling tourney this Saturday with 12 teams coming to the high school, so lots of wrestling this Saturday if you want to show up and support the wrestlers. We are doing a JA Job Spark. It is a virtual thing for seventh grade students. That is on March 6th. This will be our first time participating. Um, they say it will be lots of career exploration, possible um, interview skills and personality traits as to what the kids would best fit into, things like that. So that's through junior achievement. And then spring break is also coming up and we will be hosting enrichment, at, or I'm sorry, intercession as well the second week. Questions? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we hosted the girls' basketball sectional um, in our culinary arts class, did the hospitality room. I've never heard anybody talk about hospitality room before, but that was the buzz during the sectional amongst the media, especially. Um, so that was a great thing. Uh, we had the Kiwanis meeting where our liberal arts programs got to present. The band and choir performed. Uh, that was a huge hit. Again, Culinary provided the lunch. Their food's becoming pretty popular. We're getting people requesting them to kind of cater things. Um, we sent five wrestlers to the state finals in Evansville. Uh, something even better is we sent nine to East Chicago to semi-state. In Rochester, Indiana, we get blinded by the fact that we send two, three, four, five every year to the state. I mean, in Montgomery County, which is my hometown that has three schools our size, they sent one for the whole county. Uh, Penn only sent four, so it's a pretty impressive feat to get nine to semi-state and then so many to go on. And, uh, what, two or three of those were underclassmen, so there's probably more to come down the road. Uh, we had our bowling team go to state. I would mention all their names, except for I'd probably say six of them and forget the seventh one, so I'm not going to make that mistake. <laughs> Uh, Jake Cypher went to state in the 500. He won the Warsaw sectional, so we've had a lot of success there. We had FFA week. Mr. Pearson and the Ag Kids did a great job. The tractor parade was a hit. I don't know if it was more a hit in the morning at 7.30 when all the other parents were coming in or when we did it in front of the school, but I think they had over 20 tractors this year. Uh, we had the band solo and ensemble. We had Daniel Yoakum get a silver. 
Kane Pearson got gold with distinction. Frankie Siciliano, Daniel Yoakum, Carson Tribby, Evan Damer, and Dylan Fishback got a gold in their five piece. Um, we have the he heavy equipment class machines in again this week. Uh, Mrs. Atkinson and I are doing our best. Um, I'll be honest, it wore me out today. Uh, but we do have a compact wheel loader. If you don't know what that is, it's a lot bigger machine than what we've had out there. Uh, it was good to hear the kids say they were a little intimidated by it. I had a good hour and a half this morning running it to set up the stuff, so it was kind of a fun time. But having that out there with two skid steers and a mini excavator from New Holland is a pretty good experience for our kids. Uh, the principals of healthcare class went to Woodlawn. Um, JAG students all went to IUK. Uh, we want to give a big shout out to Ms. Bendez and the pet band. They've been doing a really good job at the uh, high school basketball games, really changing that atmosphere in the gym. So we appreciate what they're doing. And then FFA uh, had their green hand banquet. I think they brought in 13 new members into that program. They had the best, best guest speaker they've ever had, I was told. Um, things we have coming up. You know who that was? Yeah. No, it was me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were. But your granddaughter did a great job saying the creed. <laughs> Uh, things we have coming up, we have a blood drive tomorrow, the boys basketball sectionals this week, so good luck without getting any snow this week there, transportation director. Uh, we're sending our robotics group to South Bend this weekend, they've about got the trailer loaded, loaded and they've about got the robot built, so that's going to be interesting. Choir concert March 4th, SAT day, where we're only having juniors in the building, everybody else is e-learning on March 5th, and we have a band concert on March 6th, and then... Um, we'll get to enjoy spring break after all those festivities. Um, as Mrs. Murphy said, the four-year plans are out for the high school kids. Um, the eighth graders have been spoken to by Mrs. B or the current seventh graders have been spoken to by Mrs. Brown, and so they can get their eighth grade schedules. And we have freshman orientation Wednesday this week. So we've got a few things going on. When we get back from spring break, it'll just ramp up even more at RHS. So we're excited about all of it. Um, the art science for seniors should be in soon. Any questions? Never a dull moment. No, and winter sports are almost over. Thank <laughs> goodness. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> we love them, but oh my. If I may, before um, we adjourn, I want to, I think that sometimes the principals um, don't boast enough, and so I want to share so a few things that they haven't shared. Jason and I have probably been spending two or three hours a week together doing deep dives into daycare and preschool and what that might look like for the district and also the community. So very much appreciate the time that he's giving to that and the possibility of an expansion maybe in the next year or two. Um, a lot of background work, he brings a lot of questions, but collectively I think that we're really starting to tackle that, so thank you Jason. Luke wasn't able to be here this evening, but as he's working on one book, one school, it really does unite the community. We have a lot of support, and when we're able to get out and share with the community, you see um, that within the donation sheet. So a lot of great things there. Cassie isn't aware, Doug and I were out uh, in the community this weekend, had a person start approaching me, and you know, you, you just aren't sure how those conversations are gonna go in public. They made their way across the restaurant specifically to say thank you for the middle school that um, so many times parents worry about that transition time at the middle school, but so thankful for the opportunities and the social growth that they see there. Um, hadn't even shared with her, but wanted to save that for this evening and got a pat on the back from my husband as we pulled my down. So, that, so thank you for that. Oscar did not share. I've been working with Oscar and his team over the past week, week and a half. The North uh, Central Indian or Northwestern Indiana Service Central and Service Center and the Northern Indiana Educational Service Center are applying for large grants for the northern part of the state in regards to career coaching, career awareness, those types of things. Rochester Schools was one of two selected in the northern part of the state to highlight what we do in college and career, and they used our data to help drive that grant, which is huge when you get that phone call and they want to use you as an example. So thank you for your hard work. Scott and Megan are working behind the scenes. They're going to do um, an uh, AI presentation to the Kiwanis. So very thankful that they have opened their doors 
the entire month of February, they invite Rochester schools in to be highlighted. But Scott does a lot behind the scenes that he doesn't get recognized for as well. So thank you. And I've already shared with, with you, Shot has been a blessing and uh, we have daily conversations and really making headway in that area. So thank you as well. Also wanna share out with the board just very quickly. Um, we had our last uh, session with the ambassador program. Our ambassadors this year are Trent O'Dell, Michael Ladd, <coughs> Julian Smith, Kendra Jadzinski, Chizin Randy Wynn, Erica Heidi, and Chuck Gibbons. And the team is currently working on their April meeting. We're gonna put them out in the district. They're gonna spend the whole day from about 7.15 to 3.45 from <laughs> kid arrival, uh, food service line, transportation, small groups. They're gonna do a couple teacher evaluations, those types of things. And then I'm going to ask them to be here for our May meeting. So if you see them, please thank them. And overall, I believe that they felt that that ambassador program has been very effective and that it should be open to the public moving forward. Scott's been able to set in on a couple of those and, and help me out. And I think that it's been very well received and very engaged. So thank you for that opportunity. I think that's all I have. All right, anything else from the group? Sounds like we just had a really good run the last couple months, and I'm really <laughs> excited. I'm excited. It sounds like, you know, we came into a, a good, good school corporation. It just continues to get better, and uh, we're great, very thankful that we could be just a little tiny part of that. So, um, thank you all for all the hard work that you do. And with that, we are adjourned. Have a good evening. Except for those. Of